Andrew, welcome to Atomo. It is May 19th, 2023, and this one is fission and fizz. There's a lot, a lot of froth going on uh, in the world. Um, so a few days ago, there was an explosion uh, out in western Ukraine. Kamlinitsky, don't have good pronunciation there, um, but let's bring that up for you. Yeah, let's do here. There we go. So, what happened here is it looks like there was an ammunition depot that was hit. So. If we reverse here, here's an article, uh, National Post, March 21st, 2023. And this is the talk about bringing the special armor-piercing rounds into Ukraine that contain depleted uranium. So the reason for using depleted uranium in tank shells is it gives it much higher penetrating power. It's quite dense, very dense material. Now, depleted uranium is not fissile, so we don't have to worry about that. If you read any articles and they're trying to compare the depleted uranium to stuff that can go boom in a mushroom cloud, that's actually not accurate. What can happen though, go over to now, this is Zaprosia nuclear power plant. We're not talking about that in this one. We're talking about the mushroom cloud. This article is giving us examples of the depleted uranium that sits on these 25 millimeter rounds. So tank rounds can be up to 120 millimeters. And there's a lot of material there. So if we look at this image here, let me make it big for us. There we go. And let that roll. And let's do a rewind there. So this was this is looking at that explosion uh, a few days ago where potentially there is an ammunition depot outside of this city. The whoa, there we go. Got a chain reaction going on there. The thought is that the Russians used hypersonic missiles to target the facility, allegedly. Uh, not sure on that, uh, but there you have it. Now, if there is allegedly depleted uranium ammunition in that, and that pops up, the uranium can burn but it's uh, I don't know the I don't have the appropriate chemistry knowledge to talk highly intelligently about it but it does uranium is toxic and just by blowing it off and throwing it into the air like that it does have a health hazard you know and it's just it's kind of East Palestine but you don't see any of the major news outlets talking about this potential problem. And there we have it again. So, here. Now, what I was looking for prior to doing the video is is there any radiation maps that show the information. I didn't find any in the open source space. I did some searching around to see, okay, is there any sensors happening or, or being in place that showing this? Uh, I saw on some private chats that some folks were saying that the sensors were turned off just because it was creating inconvenient news, but I didn't get a, an actual link to what was going on there. So 
Yeah, so that's that's something to keep an eye on uh, is the fallout from a particular uses of bringing that material into the war zone, having it stockpiled. It seems that there is enough Russian informants around, or it's just basically it's just too easy to to determine where they're storing this stuff. Um, and so it gets hit. And the, like you're saying, it's about $500 million worth of equipment and ammunition that was destroyed. Um, okay, let's, let's look at your tax dollars just going up in smoke there. Uh, if you're wondering why prices are going up and why a box of eggs costs almost 10 bucks, well, here you go. It's our leadership throwing money away to have stuff like this happen. Well, and then what else is going on? Let's bring else. The G7 talking about on our nuke nuke uh, strand here. And the G7 is meeting and Protesters got big look. They're getting their intent to protest. You don't see any forces traveling in that. You don't see the Navajo stormtroopers pushing them away. It's just basically let's not get into nuclear war. Okay, we don't want to allow war with China. Representatives trying to move us into patterns now. Go there. This is something that we're, we're keeping in mind. Uh, we don't want to get on the escalation escalator and just move it up towards this. So, as I mentioned before, our leadership are so old that they. So our industrial wars like World War One, World War II, now this one is different. Uh, we see demonstrations going on, even if it's just not in very of the say collective products of the commanders. I think that is coming as well. Not exactly the global south, but they do participate in those areas. Don't want war with China. Absolutely, we don't want war with China. We're just looking for the leadership that wants to shake hands, make deals, and even in this one, saying, you know, here they are walking to the ruins of the only building that survived under the shock wave near the epicenter of the atomic explosion back when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. And yeah, so we saw the outcome that happened there, and we don't wish to repeat uh, what happened. We'll get that back on the screen for you. I realize I'm looking at this. There it is for you. Um, again, marching again. No horses, no stormtroopers trampling them. Good, peaceful protest like we should have here in Canada, but of course uh, we have tyrannical people in power. And tyrannical people in power are weak, and when you push them, they cry, they take their ball and go home, and then drop the big bombs on top of you. They have a temper tantrum of epic proportions. So that's it for today, Friday. And for those in Canada, it's our long weekend, Victoria Day weekend. And so have a good long weekend for those in Canada.